Congressman Bay, yeah. uh, it's very nice meeting you. Thank you, Arthur. It's good to meet you as well. Thanks for having me. Um, this is One Korea Network. My name is yeah. Arthur Lee, and uh, I'm actually a North Korean defector, and I'm, my background is in business and trade between China and North Korea. Yes. And I know uh, you voted in favor of uh, Oro Mombier, North yeah. Korean Nuclear Sanction Act, four years ago. Yes. And then why do you think uh, sanctions on North Korea is important? Yeah, it, it, look, that was such a tragedy, mm -hmm. and um, I thank you for understanding that, and I'm so glad that you're here mm -hmm. and for your history. Thank uh, you. And you have much to teach us, mm -hmm. because it's such a closed society yes. that as average Americans, we know very little about it, but we've seen the atrocities, we've seen the oppressions. Mm -hmm. And whether you look at a country like Iran, or you look at a uh, more oppressive side of China, or if you look at um, uh, North Korea, we, we can't allow them uh, to economically flourish. So one of the tools uh, that we have as a strong economy in America are sanctions. Mm -hmm. It's so valuable for um, the 200 countries around the world to trade with the United States. Mm -hmm. And so to support liberty for all, we want to encourage sanctions for those who are oppressive and tyrannical and totalitarian, mm -hmm. uh, ultimately to break that regime so that the people could have freedom. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I think the sanction is one of the biggest leverage the U.S. government has. Yes. And as you probably know, the South Korean current South Korean government is trying to dismantle sanctions against North Korea to appease the Kim regime. Yeah. And then the top officials from the uh, South Korean government recently urged that U.S. should reconsider sanctions. Yeah. And what do you think? What are your thoughts on South Korean government's approach? Well, I've been to South Korea uh, within the last several years. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was shortly after the, the Otto Warmbier mm -hmm. tra tragedy. Um, look, I, I, I think um, that's ultimately their sovereign decision. I would discourage them mm -hmm. um, from increasing trade and from dismantling the sanctions. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have what you have, if you've seen the picture that's very famous on the internet, yeah. uh, at, uh, North Korea and South Korea at night. That's true. And you can see uh, the utter darkness in North Korea mm -hmm. and all that goes with that. Mm -hmm. And you can see the light in South Korea. Mm -hmm. So why would they want to become more like North Korea? Mm -hmm. Why does it North Korea, they easily, easily, I mean, President Trump extended an olive branch of, uh, uh, you know, that he could increase his freedoms. That's true. And uh, we would, we, you know, we would hope that the Kims would do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, so far, I don't see it. Mm -hmm. So I want them to come our direction and towards freedom rather than us to um, legitimize oppression. Sure. Um, you know, I, I personally believe sanction is the best way to convince North Korean regime to yeah. act uh, properly. And uh, one question I have here is, if you are a president of the United States, how do you deal with North Korean dictator? I think that um, being strong is always an asset. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were very nervous in early 2017 about the relationship with North Korea. But President Trump um, I, I thought he was unconventional, mm -hmm. but he was strong. He had a yes. business mind, he had tremendous strength, and I think he won with his unconventionality. He did not legitimize the, the um, uh, he did not legitimize the, 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 the North Korean um, government, but he offered them a pathway to move forward. Mm -hmm. And look, ultimately we want, um, we want the world to be safe from, from nuclear attack. We don't want, uh, we think that that's one way that North Korea would get legitimacy is through nuclear uh, strength. Mm -hmm. And so we want to take that off the table and give them a path to economic prosperity if they move towards freedom. Mm -hmm. And we want them to feel the benefits of freedom. Mm -hmm. Although that's that's really not in their operating system. That's not how they, they think. So very, very difficult. But I like the way that President Trump handled it with absolute strength mm -hmm. and yet offering them a pathway towards freedom. All right. Thank you for your view. And um, one more question sure. is, uh, China has been supporting North Korea for decades. Mm -hmm. So what U.S. government should take, I mean, what approach the U.S. government should take on China? Yeah, 
it, it, what I see is uh, tremendous things in China that uh, need to be investigated. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to understand the uh, Wuhan lab. We mm -hmm. need to absolutely understand some parts of the U.S. involvement there in funding and the was it um, a, a gain of function research there? Uh, what are they doing in regards to um, uh, oppressing some people groups mm -hmm. in China? And what are they doing to enable um, a North Korean uh, dictatorship mm -hmm. as a proxy uh, against the U.S.? So that's very concerning. If you look at the geography of North Korea, you see the longest border yes, is with China. Yeah. Um, and then you also see a very short border, perhaps, with, uh, with the Soviet Union, with Russia. Yeah. I, met, I was there when it was the Soviet Union, so wow. it was many, many years ago, but yeah. with Russia. And so, I mean, that's two um, land connections with uh, some of the worst dictatorships in the, in the world. Yeah. So very, very concerning. And um, I think we need to be strong. And we need, of course, because China is on the world stage, the second largest economy, mm -hmm. we need to be engaged with them, uh, but we need to be uh, very strong. We need to have a strong military and a strong economy mm -hmm. to afford that military and I think that is good for the world when the U.S. is strong. I mean, as far as I know, China is allowing North Korean you know, government to do smuggling and then, you know, they secretly help North Korean government to do yeah. illegal activity yeah. and uh, despite the UN sanctions. Yeah. So I think your approach is tremendous, mm -hmm. you know, approach, I guess. Um, and another question I have here is uh, about South Korean situation. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, have you heard about South Korea, South Korea's current situation where its freedom and then rights is uh, diminished by the current South Korean government? So especially the North Korean human rights activists uh, who has been sending information with balloons to North Korea is legally banned for, uh, by the South Korean ruling party and the government. So what do you think on uh, South Korean government and the ruling party's approach? Well, it's, you're in such close proximity. I mm -hmm. mean, you have the, the, the long border. And again, my, you know, my brother in 1990 was a helicopter pilot along that border. So uh, I prayed for South Korea for a long time and mm -hmm. our, our U.S. relationship with them and our U.S. the presence of 35,000 or so U.S. soldiers that are there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I need to, I think U.S. strength, but I want to make sure, I, I, I see that North Korea and other totalitarian regimes mm -hmm. that are socialistic and communistic they're not strong enough to go face to face with um, a Western alliance. Mm -hmm. So what they'll do is they'll try to make us, uh, they'll erode us from the inside through disinformation. Um, if it's promoting critical race theory in a university, mm -hmm. if it's dis sending disinformation to South Korea to help break apart the strength of that society, um, if that's from China, if that's from Russia, if it's from others, they don't want strong free countries yes, and they don't want to go to war with them either we don't want that either yeah. but what they'll do is they'll try to make another nation commit suicide mm -hmm. and i'm afraid that's what we're having we're seeing um either the radical left which are complicit uh with many around the world mm -hmm. against the united states and you're probably seeing some of those same principles at play in south korea where uh, oppressive regimes will send disinformation into a society mm -hmm. and take the uh, progressive or leftist um, uh, side and will prop them up. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's hard to pin down. You see it in universities, you see it in other places, um, but you, you can see the evidence of it. You can see the fingerprints of it. Um, recently, South Korean President Moon Jae-in had interview with Times and he talks about Kim Jong-un and he uh, assessed that Kim Jong-un is um, bold and innocent and has very good leadership and uh, what's your personal perspective on Kim Jong-un? You know, I, I, I can't say when I'm in the U.S. I, I focus on mostly U.S. issues, yes, um, not sir. on the yeah. foreign affairs, but if I'm able to serve in the U.S. Senate, which I'm running for right now, I'll certainly mm -hmm. pay close attention to that. Oh. But anybody that supports a strong relationship with the U.S. and promotes freedom of its own people to, mm -hmm. to make their own decisions, that's someone I would support. So as whoever if a president supports that, then I'll support them internationally. We want them to make their allow their people to be more free and to mirror in their own cultural way, mm -hmm. a way that uh, allows their people to prosper. That will be my final question. And then do you have any message to your fellow South Koreans and North Koreans who fight against communism and totalitarianism? I would say put their ultimate hope in our God, our creator. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would ask him for, for mercy and uh, for freedom. 
ultimately he's the one that gives us true freedom. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, it'll be my honor. Yeah. And then uh, nice. Yeah, nice to meet you. you. Thank, Thank you. you.